Hey guys, Math 1700, Summer 2015, <clears throat> Linear Functions. A um, couple of things before we get started. There have uh, um, been kind of bombarded with the issues about my math lab and the textbooks. Um, keep in mind on my math lab that uh, a couple of things. You don't need the textbook. Uh, we're going to write the textbook as we go along. As long as you're watching all these videos, I'm going to tell you exactly what you need to know, and I'm going to tell it to you and teach it to you easier than uh, what the what the textbook does. I'm going to show you the shortcuts, the tricks, uh, tricks of the trade, things of that nature. Um, it's not always going to be easy. Sometimes it's going to be challenging. Sometimes you have to work a little harder than uh, maybe you want, but uh, it it it's you know it it's doable. Um, in terms of the book, what I, uh, the the point I tried to make in the uh, previous video. Uh, the first video is you don't have to have the book, but you got to have my math lab. And what you can do in my math lab, I think there's a 14-day uh, free um, uh, activation. So if nothing else, uh, go in. If you don't have your text, if, if you don't have the money to, to, to sign up uh, for the... Uh, uh, for the activation, go ahead and get your 14-day free free uh, activation. Uh, you can always upgrade that. Uh, you can pay for it, or you can go in and uh, purchase a textbook from the bookstore. They'll give you an activation code. You can go in and manually enter it and uh, and get things going. Okay, um, guys. What I want to do today is uh, just get the ball rolling on uh, linear functions. And guys, at the end of the day, linear functions are just those uh, types of graphs, types of relationships, if you will, that uh, form straight lines. There are two important components of a linear function. One of those is the point at which it crosses the y-axis. Now, guys, remember in the Cartesian coordinate system, this is the x-axis. And this is the y-axis. So this value right here, which we will refer to as b, is the point uh, at which our line crosses the y-axis. Another important component uh, is called the slope. And the slope is just the steepness of the line. So guys, lines that go up to the right, we say that these things have a positive slope. Lines that go up to the left, we say that those things have a negative slope. And lines that are flat, which you don't want to see if you're in a hospital, uh, those things have a zero slope. Now we also run into lines that have an undefined slope, but in an applied course of this nature, we don't run into those uh, very much. Okay. So the ones that we're going to run into typically, because we're going to be looking at linear relationships, as they deal with revenue and cost and profit and ultimately supply and demand, uh, the ones that we're going to run into mostly are either going to have a positive slope or a negative slope. And the slopes and intercepts are going to take on uh, certain uh, economic and business uh, uh, terminology. Okay. Now, uh, all linear functions come in the form... that I'm giving you here. They come in the form of y equals some number times x plus another number. Now these numbers don't have to be positive. For example, we could have y equals negative 2x plus 7. The number that goes in front of the x is always going to be referred to as our slope. The number that goes without the x is referred to as our intercept. Now, sometimes we call those y-intercepts, and that's fine in a, in, a, in a standard beginning algebra course or intermediate algebra course where we're dealing with x's and y's. But in an applied course like this, sometimes we have graphs where our x variable may be q, which is some quantity, And our dependent variable may be c of q, 
which is a cost as a function of a particular Q. So we might have some linear function that we define as C of Q, where some particular quantity will result in a particular cost. Okay, we're going to run into revenue functions and cost functions and profit functions, supply and demand functions, which all take on a linear relationship. Now, what we one of the first things that we do uh, in uh, a, a course of this nature to try to get where we want to be is create the equation of a line given two points. All right, so I can just very quickly, I don't want to be too formal here, I can see that 1, 4 would be maybe something like this. And the negative 2, 13 would be something like this. So I can see when I connect those two points that I'm going to have, I didn't do a very good job of connecting the points, so pretend that line goes through those two points. But I can see that I'm going to have a line with a negative slope. And I can see within some reasonable certainty that my y-intercept is going to be positive where it crosses the y-axis. Well, I can stop speculating here. and I can go ahead and, and, and start making some things happen, okay? So guys, in, in coming up with uh, the equation of the line, uh, if we want to do these things manually, now I'm going to show you a really easy way here in just a second where you don't have to do these things manually, but I think in terms of preparing us for the bigger, better things to come, or at least other things to come, I don't know whether bigger or better, it's good to run through how we find the equation of a line that passes through two points. The first thing I would want to do here is I would want to calculate the slope. And guys, keep in mind that the, 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 the uh, function that we are trying to create here is in form of y equals mx plus b. I don't know why my... Uh, does that but it does so guys remember the number that goes in front of the X is referred to as the slope and the number that goes uh, without the X is called the intercept so the very first thing I'd want to do here is I'd want to find the slope and the slope formula is to take the difference and our y's over the differences in our x's. Now we've got the flexibility in these two order pairs up here, these two, two, two points, of which one we call x1 and which we call, I guess I messed up there, that should be uh, x2 minus x1, x2 minus x2 would give you zero, which would give you major problems. So what I would do here is I would call this uh, x1, y1, and I would call this x2, y2. So in finding the slope here, I would put in y2, which is 13, uh, minus uh, y1, which is 4, over x2, which is negative 2, minus 1. So guys, uh, I'm going to get 9 over negative 3 which tells me that my slope is negative 3. Now, I don't know everything I need to know about my line up here, my equation, but I know a negative 3 is going to go there. I know that my function is y equal negative 3x plus something. So I've just got to determine what that something is. So I found that from number 1. Then my slope is negative 3. Now, guys, what does that tell you? Remember, slope equals rise over run. And rise is nothing more than the change vertically 
over the change horizontally. The change up and down over the change left to right. Now when we look at the slope equals rise over run, we see that we need a fraction. But we don't, we just have negative 3. Well, it turns out when we have this in the context of a slope, we have to turn this into a, a fraction because there's two parts there. There's a change that we get vertically and the change that we get horizontally. So this tells me that for every negative 3 units that I change going up and down, I need to make one unit change going left or right. So if you can imagine starting at some arbitrary point on a line, negative 3 says we're going to move down one point, two points, three points. For every move that we go to the right one. So this slope that we're going to have is going to look something like that. Now the second thing we need to do is we need to find our intercept. And what we know right now is we know that y equals negative 3x plus something. Well, I've got an x and a y. In fact, I've got two of them from my points. So if I can just insert one of those values, so I should say sets of values, into what I'm given, then I can easily solve for my b. Well, guys, I'm sitting there looking at the points 1, 4, and negative 2, 13. Well, I'm going to choose 1, 4 because I don't like to deal with negative numbers. Negative times negatives and subtraction, it's just harder. Uh, and plus, I like smaller numbers because they're just easier to deal with. So I know that my y value is 4, so now I'm using the order pair 1, 4. So I know that when my y value is 4, my slope is negative 3, my x value is 1, and I have my b value. Now let's clean this up. One thing I've noticed about teaching math and statistics over the years is the good students go ahead and write extra times. Uh, the students who usually make mistakes try to do things in too many uh, kind of mental arithmetic, if you will. So let's just go ahead and write that out and get rid of all that kind of garbage there and make it as simple as we can. And that tells me on both sides I can see clearly I need to add positive 3, which leads me to a B value of positive 7. So gang, I can put all this together. And I can say that my function that contains the points uh, 1, 4, and negative 2, 13 is going to be negative 3x plus 7. Now, you know, I've been doing this a long time, and, well, I don't guess I've been doing it that long, but I've been doing it long enough that I just know that students uh, struggle with that. Uh, they just do. It, it's, just, it's just something that I've just noticed uh, from teaching high school. I've taught uh, at the University of Kentucky. I've taught at a community college. And, of course, I've been here at Shawnee State for uh, 21 years. Uh, I've seen students struggle with that. Now, I, I want you to be able to do this, but I'm going to show you a way on your calculator that if you just have struggled and struggled and struggled and it just seems like it doesn't matter how hard you try, it just doesn't seem like you're able to, uh, problem after problem, be successful finding the equation of a line through two points, equation of a, a linear function through two points, okay? So I'm going to show you what you can do. Uh, so guys, if you'll go to stat and go to edit, you're going to get to the, uh, to the list. And this allows us to put data into our list. 
Well, hold on, guys. I got the uh, FedEx guy. All right, guys, let me just go ahead and explain it. That's going to happen. It seems like every time I start a video, the UPS guy comes or the FedEx guy comes. It seems like the dogs start barking. I only have one dog, but you'd think I had 15, as many dogs as hang out of my uh, house. But, uh, okay, I'm done complaining. All right, gang, something for you. What we can do here in this list, this L1 and L2, which you have seen, is we can come up with this negative 3x plus 7 really really easy now ultimately I'd like for you to be able to be able to find the slope and intercept by hand uh, I think that just mathematically that's just a fundamental thing that we should be able to do but some people just can't so what we can do is we can or they uh, the, they just for some reason just can't be successful with it um, for every problem. So what we can do is we can think of our points. 1, 4, negative 2, 13. Like this. So essentially what I can do is I can put my x's in L1. I can put my y's in L2. And I've got order pair number 1, order pair number 2. And I'm going to show you how to do this on your calculator to where you can easily find the, uh, the, the function uh, or the equation of the line that passes through those two points. So, so guys, uh, what would I do? I would do a 1 and a negative 2. And then I'm going to go over to the L2 and I'm going to put in the, uh, the, the points there. So I'm going to put in a 4 and a 13. Now, let me show you something that I should have shown you this before. Let's say you've already got numbers there and you want to get rid of them and you don't want to go through and just go delete, delete everywhere. Uh, if you want to delete a bunch of numbers but not get rid of your entire list, yeah, so if I want to delete that 1357 but keep my list there, uh, what I could do is go up and highlight the list and just hit clear, enter. And what will happen is it will delete the numbers, but it won't uh, delete the entire list. Now, if you've got some numbers in there like this, and you say, well, I want to delete the numbers in there, and you go up there and you hit delete, well, it will take you literally, it will delete the numbers uh, and everything. Because you can get that back. So if that ever happens to you, we can get it back for you. All right, gang. Uh, I've got my numbers in L1 and L2, so now I want to go second function quit. I want to go back to my stat button. I want to go over to calc. And I want to scroll down to number four, which says L-I-N-R-E-G. That actually stands for linear regression, which is a statistical technique. But we can use the calculator to our advantage to create the equation of the line that passes through those two points using this, uh, uh, using this feature of the calculator. So what I can do is hit uh, enter, and then I'll go left parentheses, which is right above the 8. And then I can go L1, L2. Uh, guys, if you look at your keys, 1, 2, 3, you can see right above that in blue letters, you have L1, L2, L3, where, is where we put our information. Since it's blue, i got to hit the blue key first and hit the L1. Then I need to hit my comma and blue key again, L2. And then hit my right parentheses. Now, wham, bam, thank you, man. Something really, really cool is going to show up. The negative 3 and the 7 that took us quite a bit of time to find by hand. Okay? And you can see right here that the A equal negative 3 tells you that the number that goes in for A, which is the number before the X, which we now know is the slope, that the slope has to be negative 3 and that the intercept is 7 because 7 is our B value and it doesn't go with the x. So whatever goes with the x is the slope. Whatever doesn't go with the x is the intercept. Now this feature 
allows me as your finite math professor to make it really, really, really easy on you to find linear functions. But that way we got, you know, I have more time to, uh, to, to spend doing uh, uh, other cool stuff, okay? So speaking of cool stuff, I have a, um, oh, by the way, your, your assignment has been posted on my math lab. Uh, it's due Sunday night, just as, uh, as I promised you, okay? Now, the cost of producing uh, 100 widgets is 2,000. And the cost of producing 700 widgets, that's, hold on, I've got something popping around here, and I don't know what it is. Oh, a new version. Yeah, we'll pass on that one for right now. Okay. Uh, so the uh, cost of producing 700 widgets is 5,500, and um, the uh, cost of producing 700 widgets is 5,500. So it says find the cost, fu cost function C of N, which relates the number of produced items in with cost C uh, around the slope and intercept to the nearest hundreds. Now, I'm going to take this away just for a second, and let's talk a little bit about function notation. And I remember seeing function notation, I think, my first year in college, and I remember thinking, why in the world are they changing something that I'm good at? Why do I need to learn something new when what I'm doing now is currently working? For example, I had the uh, points 1, 4, and uh, what, 3, uh, negative 2, 13. And I wanted to find, in terms of x's and y's, I wanted to find the relationship between these. I did that. So why mess with it? Why do I have to learn function notation? Well, a couple of reasons. Function notation allows us to, um, to I guess, communicate more effectively. Uh, it allows us to simplify the questions that we ask. And, and maybe you're one of these learners just because, just because we do. So given that y is a function of x, we can come in and rewrite this since these are the same thing. Sorry about the negative 3 thing there. I should go in front of the x, but I got uh, kind of sloppy. We can rewrite in standard xy form that equation, that function, in terms, uh, in, in, in terms of function notation. What that allows us to do is let's say that I want to find the value, that's, that's sloppy guess, of y when x is equal to 2. In function notation, all I have to say is find f of 2. So f of 2 would say every place you see an x, change it with a 2. So our function value would be positive 1. So it simplifies finding values of functions uh, uh, using this notation. Now, it's really, really, really handy when we have functions that actually mean something. Uh, and what I mean is the, 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 the 1, 4 and... Uh, uh, negative 213, those are just, just X's and Y's that I made up just to, to, for an illustration. But guys, in our problem right here, we have uh, cost of uh, widgets and, and, and number of widgets. So uh, we are setting up where N is the number or the quantity And C of N is the cost as a function
of the number or the quantity. Okay? So guys, what we know is we know that um, C of 100 is equal to 2,000 because it says the cost of producing 100 widgets is 2,000. So when when n is equal to 100, the cost is 2,000. And we also know that C of 700 is equal to 5,500. Anytime we're given function notation, we can create the equal order pairs. This tells us when x, in this case is n, is 100. Our y value is 2,000. When x is 700 or n is 700, our function value is 5,500. So guys, in this case, we're generically used to having x or y as a function of x. But because of the nature of the problem, we've decided to call our dependent variable n and we've decided to call our, uh, I'm sorry, our independent variable n, our dependent variable c of n. Now, we want to find a cost function. Have we seen anything like this before, where we have two ordered pairs and we want to create the linear function? Absolutely, we just did it. We just did it with 1, 4, and we just did it with uh, negative 2, 13. So when I look at this, I think, now wait a minute. I just worked a problem like that. That looks like that with just different numbers. So if what Dr. Darbro showed me on the video or what in class, whatever it may be, worked up here, why won't it work down here? Well, that's the way you learn mathematics, guys. You look for patterns. You repeat success. So, and that's exactly what we're going to do here. Part A says find the cost function C of N that relates the number of produced items N with the cost around the slope and intercept to the nearest hundreds. Well, I don't know about you, but I like to do things the simplest way. <clears throat> and you can say, well, Dr. Darbo showed me this way that, uh, that works, and uh, it, it worked before, right? So I have uh, one amount uh, of 100 and another amount of 700. So those are the quantities, or N. Now the cost that went with 100 is uh, 2,000. And the cost that went with uh, 700 is 5,500. Now what did we do before? We went to stat. Actually we didn't, guys I'm sorry. What we did first is we went second function quit. Yeah. Then we went and quit. Uh, your, your second function and your quit button is right there. So to get out, once you enter your, uh, your, your two order pairs, go second function quit to get out of that so you can perform the operation. Now, kind of weird, but you go back in there. All right. We went over to calc. We went down to number four. So I'm just going to hit number four. And I went left parentheses, second function one, comma, second function two, right parentheses. And I get my answer. Now it says round uh, the slope and intercept to the nearest hundredths. So gang, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to write my final answer. So guys here, I'm going to have C of N 
My slope is 5.83. In. And I have 1416.67. Hundreds means two places. So, gang, that's going to be the answer to the first problem. Now, something that you can do that's kind of cool, sort of, maybe, <laughs> is you can go into y equals right here. And I can clear this out. Uh, I don't want you to get caught up in this stuff just yet. We'll get, uh, we'll get there long enough. Let me get it back to where you're going to be. Okay. So what I can do now is I can type in uh, my 5.83x. My uh, calculator doesn't have a... Um, hold on. And then do uh, plus uh, 1416.67. And then what I can do is kind of cool. I can go uh, uh, to, to my window to set it up to where it uh, makes sense for my problem. Now, guys, remember in our window here, X is the number, right? And in our problem, the numbers were 100 and 700. So I need to set it up something that kind of makes sense to my problem. So I'm going to go from 100 up to about 1,000. Okay, that includes my 100 and my 700. And in this problem, my Ys represent my cost. Well, my cost ranges from 2,000 to 5,500. So I'm going to let the cost go from a little bit below 2,000. I may start at, say, 1,000. And do my cost maybe at 6000 something above uh, the biggest. Okay, hit graph. And I'll see the graph of the line. Now, just to give you an indication that what we're doing does make sense, uh, well, I don't know if it makes sense or not, right here there's a calc button. So I can go second function calc and go value. And it allows me to come up with a function value given a particular x value. So when I put in 100 there, within, you know, kind of accepted uh, rounding errors, I should get something very close to what? Well, when X is 100, the cost is 2,000. So I should get something very, very, very close to 2,000. And you see I do. Now, the reason it's not perfect is this 5.83 was not my slope. My slope was 5.833333, on and on and on. But the problem said round to the nearest hundreds, and that's what we did. Uh, the intercept is not 14, 16.67. It was 14, 16 point six 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 on and on. So that's why we're off a little bit here. Guys, we can do that again. Go second function calc. Go value. And when we put in 700, we should get something very close to 5,500, which we do. Okay? Now, let's go ahead and work this. So what is the value of the slope? Uh, that's going to be 5.83. Interpret uh, its value in the context of the problem. It would be the additional cost. Per unit produced. Now, the next thing is what uh, is another name for the slope when we have a cost function? Well, guys, we got two things. We can call this the marginal cost or variable cost. What is the value of the intercept? Fourteen sixteen point sixty seven. Interpret its value in the context of the problem. Guys, the intercept is always 
the value when our x, or in this case n, is equal to 0. So this says that c of 0 is 14, 16.67. This tells us when we create no quantity, no widgets, that the cost of producing zero widgets is $1,416.67. My daughters were one time, they went by and saw me teaching like this, and they're like, Daddy, you don't write r real well. I said, uh, and I'm like, well, yeah, I guess not. But uh, they said, I bet you write better in, when you're in the classroom on the chalkboard. No, I don't. Uh, doesn't get any better. All right, uh, where are we here? I've lost my... Okay, E, what is uh, another name of the intercept when we have a cost function? Uh, well, guys, should make sense. The fixed cost. So, uh, when, uh, you know, what it... Uh, it, it fixed cost is just what uh, it costs to open the doors. It's before you produce the first widget. So for this fictional company here producing these widgets, it's going to cost $1,416.67 to open the door every morning. And for each additional widget, it's going to cost $5.83 manufacturing cost. So now, what will be the cost of producing 1,250 widgets? Uh, guys, I'm going to use the calculator. Just because I do. So I'm going to calculate. I'm going to go to value. I'm going to type in 1250. And it doesn't work. Now, what happened there? Well, what happened was, uh, and actually, I'm glad this happened. Uh, we didn't, well, uh, I didn't set my range big enough to work this problem. Okay. So I'm going to hit go to, and it's usually going to take me where I have a problem. Um, and let me, let me show you what's, uh, what's going on there. If I go back to window, I can only work problems from zero to a thousand. And really that's all I needed to do. I don't know why the thing keeps narrowing. That's all I needed to do because I had a hundred widgets and 700 widgets. This zero to a thousand right here took care of what I had. But now for some reason, I want to come in and figure out 1250. So I need to go high enough to where 1250 is included. So I'm just going to be safe and go out there around 2000. All right. So now I'm going to graph. I'm going to go second function calc. value, type in 1250, and I'm going to get my value of 8704.17. Okay, now I, I said something uh, in my introductory video that I think that this online uh, learning has a lot of places where it's really advantageous. Uh, this is one of those places. It really is. This is one of those places where I think it's uh, better to learn this online than it is in the classroom. Because when I'm doing all the calculator stuff, if you're not getting it, you can rewind the video. If you don't get it in class, you can't rewind me. And some students don't feel comfortable speaking up in class and telling their professor to slow down. Uh, you've always got the potential to tell me, tell me to slow down in this video because you can stop me rewind me and, and, and do things over. Okay. All right, gang. Uh, let's uh, get into another type of problem here. And guys, I'll tell you, part number two, uh, you're going to... Um, I, I was going to tell you, you're going to have one of these on your uh, first exam. So uh, get ready for it. So uh, the cost of making 100 items is $3,000, and the cost of making 150 items is $3,300. Uh, the relationship between quantity and cost is linear. So what I'm thinking about here is I'm going to create a function, C of Q, which is the cost as function 
of Q, which is our quantity. So I've got a quantity of 100 items. I've got a quantity of 150 items. So gang, let's set the problem up. Let's learn from what we've done previously. And make it, uh, make it, uh, make this type of problem easier. So, uh, guys, I know that uh, C of 100, uh, let me get this where you can, where you can see it. All right, so uh, C of 100 equals 3,000. And C of 500, or I'm sorry, 150, I'm just making up stuff, uh, is 3,300. Now, what did we do before? Well, we said we can make ordered pairs. Like this. What did we do next? We use the calculator. Now, I, a lot of times I have students who are like, Dr. Darber, I just don't want to use the calculator. I want to do this by hand. Hey, you know what? Go for it. Go do it. Uh, and we'll be done with the problem. You'll still be back there farting around finding slopes. And we'll be, uh, we'll be doing cool stuff. Uh, no, I, I, no, I'm just joking. I'm being facetious here. Being goofy. Uh, you know, if, that, if that's what you like. And I, I do. I think every single student should be able to take a two-order pair uh, and be able to find the equation of a, uh, a linear function that passes through them. But uh, in an applied course like this, um, it, you know, it's kind of like my wife. Uh, she's a really good cook. And if she's in the, uh, in the kitchen and she wants to add two-thirds and five-eighths, well, I've taught her how to do it on the calculator. Now, as someone who's two years away from her Ph.D. in school psychology, should she be able to add those fractions? Yes, probably. But you know what? She's done just fine without doing it that way. Uh, in fact, she's done really well. She's at uh, the top of her profession. Uh, so she's done excellent, so... Uh, I'm just, I'm running my mouth, guys. I'm just going crazy here. So, uh, so let's, uh, let's do some stuff. So we have 100 and we have 150. And the associated cost for those items is 3000 And 3300 Alright, so what did we do before? We went second, quit. We went to stat, we went uh, over to calc, down to number four, left, second, one, comma, second, two, right parentheses. And again, guys, right down here, you've got L1, you've got L2, that can be accessed by hitting the blue key first. And right there is your comma key. Now, what we got here on the calculator is we have the y equals 6x plus 2400. Guys with me? Put the 6 in for A, the 2400 in for B. And we got our answer, right? Well, sort of. But that's not what we want. That's the generic using y's and x's. We, what we want is the cost as a function of quantity. So what's naturally going to take care of this? C of q. plus 2400, or C of Q equals 6Q plus 2400. Replace X with Q, replace Y with F of X, which is C of Q in this situation. The so guys, math doesn't have to be hard. We just like to make it hard. So our cost function will be 
uh, c of q equals 6q plus uh, 2400. I didn't leave myself much room to write here. What's the fixed cost? 2400. What's the marginal cost? Six dollars. It's the slope. Interpret in your own words what the marginal cost tells you. It tells you that the cost to produce an additional item is six bucks. I don't ask you to do this, but uh, if the, uh, the fix cost $2,400, that's what it costs to open the doors. So from this, we know that C of zero is $2,400. Before we produce the first unit, we are looking at a $2,400 cost. So I know that C of 1 is going to be what? Without even doing any plug and chug. Well, it's going to be $6 more than I started out the day with my cost. So guys, without even thinking, I know that C of 1 is going to be 2406 because I've produced one additional item going from 0 to 1. Okay? So, uh, marginal cost, we've gone over that. Now, part E, if the item is sold for $9.50, what's the revenue function? Well, guys, we run into revenue function a lot in this class. And revenue function is actually one of the, um, the easier things. Well, I've run out of paper. Uh, it's one of the easier things. But um, it's, it's one of the things that students seem to mess up the most. Okay, in our revenue function, it would make sense if we call our cost function C of Q. We would call our revenue function R of Q. Guys, your R of Q is going to be the price that you sell the unit at times the quantity. When I was in the golf business, if I sold drivers for $300, then my P was 300. If I sold five of those in a day, I could take five times 300 to get 1,500. That would be my revenue when I sold a quantity of five drivers. Guys, don't put stuff out here like you do in the cost function. The revenue function is simple. It's the price you sell it at times the number uh, of, uh, of the quantity. So, uh, guys, taking that very, very simple concept, um, what uh, if something is sold for nine fifty? What's our revenue function? What's well, called R of Q for revenue? The price is nine fifty times Q. Now, I'll tell you something. I see a lot on exams, and 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 this is a no no. I see students get sloppy and just put that. They don't use the Q. Well, what that tells you is that the revenue is never changing. It's always $9.50, and it doesn't vary according to the quantity. It's a constant. If you have a quantity of 10 or 10 million, your revenue is $9.50. That makes no sense. Revenue has to vary according to the quantity. So guys, just from uh, teaching this class a lot, uh, always uh, make sure you put the Q there. Uh, tell you what, I need to run and get more paper. Uh, I'm going through paper like crazy. Give me uh, 30 seconds.
I guess. Um, now, the the next question we get into this this crazy is gonna drive me insane. All right. Uh, the next question we get into is how many items most must be sold uh, to to break even, and uh, let's uh, let's do some some uh, kind of teaching moment here, okay? Uh, break even. Uh, very very simple. As you would think, that is where your cost and your revenue are equal. Or, it's where your cost minus your revenue is equal to zero, which is equivalent to the revenue minus the cost being equal to zero. Uh, we typically work with this one because when we open a business, we hope that our revenue is going to be more than our cost so we can make money. But this is another form that is perfectly equivalent and, 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 and okay to work with. So I'm going to demonstrate this problem with this form. So gang, we saw that our cost function in this problem was 6 cubed plus 2400. We saw that our revenue function was 9.5Q, right? Yeah. Subtract 6Q from both sides. That should make sense. Divide both sides by 3.5. So gang, I'm going to put this in my calculator, so I have 2400 uh, divided by 3.5. I get 685.7142857. I uh, can't have uh, partial quantity in, uh, in, in these objects, so um, it's going to take 686 uh, units. So I always round that up to the next... Uh, X value, and that's, uh, that's pretty common to do that. Okay. Now, how many items, uh, so how many items must be sold to break even? Uh, this is going to be 686. Now, next question there is how many items must be sold to realize a profit of 100,000? Now, we've got another function that we run into in Math 1700. So let's think about what we've got so far. In 1700, we run into a cost function. Which is a number times Q plus another number. This is our marginal cost. And this is our fixed cost. Another thing we've run into is R of Q. And that's a value times Q. What goes in that box? The price. Guys, we can combine these two things. and get a profit function, which should be clear that we would call it P of Q, called revenue function R of Q, cost function C of Q. We call, a prof, prof, uh, <laughs> we call our profit function P of Q, and our profit function is just the revenue minus the cost. Now we saw earlier if our profit is equal to zero, then we have a break-even point. So when this is equal to zero, we can solve for R of Q minus C of Q. Now for our problem,
our profit function is going to be what? It's going to be our revenue function. Minus our cost function. And you know what? That looks so right. And it is so wrong. If you wake up wanting to do a problem wrong, do that. Now, what have I done? Guys, this, this, is, this minus right here, the subtraction, says that we want to subtract the entire cost function. This notation right here, I've uh, gotten sloppy and I did this intentionally because it's a uh, mistake that students make quite often. This is only subtracting the 6Q. It's not affecting the 2400. That negative sign has to affect the entire cost function. So this is just going to require that we do another step. Distribute the negative through, and we um, simplify to make 3.5Q minus 2400. Now, this particular problem here wants us to uh, realize a profit of 100,000. So, this should be pretty easy now. So, we want our profit. So, we know that our profit function is 3.5Q minus 2,500. So we want our profit to be 100,000 So we should know now I add 2,400 to both sides. So we get uh, 102,400 uh, equal 3.5Q. So Q is equal to 258 units. So it's going to take a lot of units to create, um, I think these were daily uh, production, this is a daily production schedule, so uh, it would take 29,258 uh, units to, uh, to break even given uh, this, no I'm sorry, not to break even, to realize a profit of 100,000. So a Q would be uh, 29,000 Uh, 258. All right, guys, got one more problem for you, and this uh, this video will be done. So, uh, changing things up a little bit here. Um, Going to go the other way. So, a piece of equipment costs 10,000 when purchased new. After 10 years, the trade-in value is 3,800. Uh, the the rate of depreciation per year is constant. Uh, guys, this information right here just tells you that the rate is linear, which means you're going to use the principles of y equals uh, mx plus b. All right? So gang, you tell me, what are we going to do here? Just like we did before, right? Uh, we know that uh, we have a function V of T, where T is the number of years after it was purchased. So we know that T of 0, when it was purchased new, is 10,000. We know that T of 10, 10 years later, 3,800. What have we done before? Created order pairs. Ten thirty-eight hundred. What did we do after that? Grab your calculator. Ninety-eight 
Well, I just lost my mind. Okay. Guys, my batteries are going bad. And it keeps uh, kicking off. I just hope I get through. Uh... <laughs> oh, wow. All right, gang, let me go get a calculator. UPS man, the dogs. My uh, my daughters tell me all the time, it's like, Daddy, you sure do have a lot of calculators. So yeah, I do. All right, uh, let's uh, let's get this going. So uh, just like before. Uh, now, this is a new calculator, so I'm going to have to clear out some things, so that's kind of cool. Go up and hit Clear, Enter, and go over and hit uh, Clear, Enter. So when X was 0, or in this case T was 0, uh, that was 1, then we had information 10 years later. We know when we had a 0, we had an uh, initial value for this problem of 10,000, and we had a 3,800. All right, what do we do next? Second, quit. What do we do next? Stat. Go over to Calc. Go down to number four. Left parentheses, blue one, comma, blue two, right parentheses. That was too fast for you. Left parentheses. Blue, one, comma, blue, two, right parentheses. All right. Now, we've got some extra stuff here, and that's fine. It's not a big deal. But we see that our uh, slope, which goes in this case A, is a negative 620. And our B, as we would expect, would be 10,000 because that's what we started with. All right. So uh, uh, the answer to part A is our value as a function of t is negative 620t plus 10,000. Now you should have known that uh, you know, this value right here was going to be 10,000 because by definition, this is the value when t is equal to zero, and we just happen to have an order pair here that uh, provided that to us. Um, so, um, you know, that part was pretty clear. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, this part here, the 620, you think about back, uh, just kind of using this as a teaching moment, you think about this back as, uh, as the slope formula, it takes the difference in the y's, y2 uh, minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So if you take this, you get uh, 3,800 minus 10,000. Which is minus 6,200 over 10. Gives you negative 620 just as we got Okay, sorry about that. I just wanted to make a point. Uh, find and interpret V12. Uh, I, I'm, I'm going to plug and chug on this one just to show you a different way. So V12 is going to be negative uh, 620 times 12. So we'll put that in our calculator.
So $2,560. So we've done part of that, said find, well we did, we found it. And now we want to interpret it. And this is the value of the uh, equipment. Twelve years after it's purchased. All right, gang, last problem. We're about done. Uh, how much does the equipment depreciate per year? Well, gang, that's exactly the interpretation of the slope. Uh, it's going to be tempting to put negative 620 there. It doesn't depreciate negative 620. It goes down 620. So um, it has a depreciation value of $620 per year. Depreciate indicates we've got a negative. So it's going to be tempting to put that negative there, but you don't put the negative there because if it's something depreciates a negative value, it actually goes up. Uh, depreciate means uh, you have an implied negative. Gang, that's all I got. Uh, this is pretty much what you're going to, what you're going to be living with for the next uh, nine weeks. Um, I think uh, it, it's a very effective way to teach this because it gives you a lot of flexibility on uh, you know, stopping some of the calculator stuff uh, and going back and watching stuff if you need to. So I think it's an extremely uh, effective way to, to teach this part of the class. So guys, take care.